To kick off our discussion, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, um, one of the world's uh, most influential thinkers on macroeconomics. Uh, Scott Minard has been heavily uh, involved in the Arctic Circle organization since its inception, a uh, managing partner of Guggenheim Partners. Uh, he serves as the firm's chairman of investments and global chief investment officer, and has become a a deeply committed supporter of the Arctic, its culture, its history, and its future needs. Um, in addition to his day job of guiding Guggenheim Partners' investment strategies um, and its uh, much admired research on global macroeconomics, uh, he's become one of the world's uh, leading investors on behalf of his clients. He's a member of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York's Investor Advisory Committee on Financial Markets and is a contributing member of the World Economic Forum and its Global Agenda Council on the Arctic. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Minard. Thank you, Matthew, for that uh, kind uh, introduction. It's amazing to stand on this stage today and look around and uh, to have been part of uh, the Arctic Circle uh, from its inception. Uh, I, I have to uh, commend President Grimson on his vision and uh, Alice Rogoff, who uh, uh, four years ago had us uh, up to Anchorage uh, to discuss Arctic issues together. And uh, uh, that, I believe, was uh, the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Uh, and uh, I hope that it is one that will endure and grow for many, many years to come. Uh, as uh, I became more familiar uh, with the situation in the Arctic, uh, and not only the issues of climate change, but also around the issues of economic development, I was challenged, uh, particularly by Alice, to take the uh, skills and abilities that, uh, that were given to me by the good Lord uh, and to try to apply them uh, to the Arctic so that we may look at a future in the Arctic, which is one which in history may be viewed in retrospect of one of great benefit to the indigenous people and one of responsibility uh, on behalf of global citizens uh, to in build a sustainable environment in the Arctic uh, to benefit those who live there and those who live elsewhere on the globe. And so today, I want to share with you some of the work of the World Economic Forum uh, uh, in the Global Agenda Council and uh, preview for you uh, some events which will be upcoming uh, at Davos in January. Uh, first, I would like to uh, point out that uh, in order to benefit from the immense economic opportunities that the Arctic offers, the citizens of the world have a responsibility to be wise stewards of sustainable development. A private sector initiative has been undertaken to help guide this development and to develop sound principles. It's reasonable to expect that a purely government solution is not possible. So let me tell you about this private sector initiative. We approached this complex challenge through three steps. It would be irresponsible to rush into development without making certain that we have a responsible and accountable code of conduct. And for that reason, we are in the process of developing what we refer to as the Arctic Investment Protocol. This is a code of conduct for responsible economic development in the Arctic which helps ensure that private sector organizations do the right thing for the right reasons. It is intended to be measurable through a series of goals against which we should be evaluated and intended to hold everyone accountable to a pragmatic set of goals and that responsible economic development should adhere to six main objectives. The first is to build resilient societies through economic development in the North. This should create enduring jobs, promote capacity building, and encourage local ownership. It is also being done in cooperation with the United Nations, 
to promote the UN Sustainable Development Goals and to create a better standard of living throughout the Arctic, both by the development of infrastructure and through investment in the peoples of the Arctic. Two, the second objective would be to respect and collaborate with the indigenous and local communities. The Arctic people should be engaged in an inclusive dialogue on the practical benefits from economic growth and development should not be imposed from afar. Through active collaboration, we can reduce the economic disparities that we see in so many Arctic regions. Objective three, protect and preserve the complex, diverse economic, or sorry, the diverse environment of the Arctic. The Arctic environment is changing rapidly. As such, investment without environmental concern will not succeed. We must not follow the historical patterns of development which have left deep and lasting scars on the local ecology. We must undertake a program of development which not only respects the local environment, but enhances and protects it. Objective four, practical, responsible, and transparent business practices. It goes without saying that all business must be conducted in a fair, legal, and transparent manner, but we should go, we should go beyond these minimum standards to set a higher bar. The Arctic Investment Protocol is to build upon sound principles, which include the International Finance Corporation's performance standards on environmental and social sustainability, the UN principles for responsible investment, and the World Bank Group environmental health and safety guidelines. Objective five, consult and integrate science and traditional ecological knowledge. Modern science, can help us understand the future of the Arctic region. But importantly also, traditional knowledge provides us an understanding of the past and of man's interaction with the Arctic environment. We need, not, we need to rely on science and traditional knowledge to navigate the rapidly changing environment. It is bad business to do otherwise. Finally, objective six global cooperation and best practices. The scale of both the opportunity and the challenge here is enormous. Only with a diverse group of stakeholders can we set a higher bar for the Arctic region. The, the institutions that you see listed here have already been engaged in this discussion and are fully participating and supporting the development of the Arctic Investment Protocol. The second step. The second step sounds less lofty, but is extremely important and practical. That is the development of the Arctic infrastructure inventory. At present, there is no one compendium of what needs to be built or created for the Arctic. This inventory will be an exhaustive database of needs and opportunities for projects around the Arctic and in, we are working in conjunction with other major uh, organizations to help develop this inventory, and this will be a sustained document uh, which will be updated over time and will be given access by all parties to view opportunities to invest in development which is responsible in the Arctic. Finally, there is a third step. It is designed to provide the necessary financial resources to implement projects and programs for sound and responsible development in the Arctic. Step three is the implementation of an Arctic permanent investment vehicle. Our goal will to be create a new permanent investment vehicle which can provide funds for projects and initiatives which will positively impact the Arctic. One of the key considerations and an absolutely necessary precondition to receive any funding from the Arctic Investment Vehicle will be an absolute adherence to the Arctic Investment Protocol. 
The Arctic Investment Protocol is not a perfect standard. It is not the highest standard, but it is a higher standard than we operate today with. I believe the Arctic Investment Protocol represents a very important first step to raising the standard and behavior of business and industry along with governments in the Arctic that will be the initiative that we need so that we may all agree that there are certain minimum standards for activity in the Arctic. We are hoping that other people will, over time, raise the bar and establish even better standards. But the advancement of the Arctic Investment Protocol at this time is an opportunity to take responsibility on the part of the private sector to protect that part of the world which is extremely important to all of us. It is with great enthusiasm that uh, my colleagues and I will be meeting uh, in the next two weeks in Abu Dhabi to discuss the protocol further. Uh, the co protocol has been circulated and vetted by a large number of stakeholders. And uh, in uh, January, it is our intention at that time uh, to publicly announce the final written protocol, which will at that time be endorsed and witnessed by many players throughout the world. Many of the largest corporations in the world, in conjunction with a number of non-governmental organizations, have taken it upon themselves to voluntarily agree to an operating standard which is higher than that which is currently required and consistent through the Arctic. Let us commit ourselves to the advancement of this protocol and let us not let the objective of reaching perfection stand in the way of obtaining the excellent. For it is time for us to move and we must move quickly. President Hollande has given us a challenge and he is right, we cannot wait. And the Arctic Investment Protocol is our opportunity now to step forward and take that first step. By the faithfulness and grace of the Almighty, we cannot fail. And by his provision, we must rely to succeed. And so we shall walk together in this endeavor and join hands and hope that we may look back in history and we will say that this was a pivotal moment and that it was at this time that mankind stood up and took responsibility and created a new future for the Arctic. Thank you.